praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Yela posanda di ala la la shi. Dera monoshte kere la 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 ya. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Thank you, Jesus. Anita, how are you? Kennedy, 
Hi Kennedy. God bless you. Hello, Timo Timo, what's up? Yes, we do. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It is God. It is God. Lord, we thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hello, Edna. How are you? All right, we said, Heavenly Father, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for being our very present help in time of need. Thank you from ta for taking us from one level of glory to the other. Thank you for giving us your precious Holy Spirit us, to lead us, to empower us. Thank you. We are grateful. And as we go into your word, we yield ourselves to the ministry of the Holy Spirit to teach us tonight. Thank you taking authority over any distraction whatsoever. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, oh, Marang, how are you? Eh, Jennifer. Oh, mm, what you did for me in Nigeria, Yomi. Oh, what you did for me in Nigeria. Mm. Dorcas, God bless you. Uh, Vinio, hello, my dear. All right, are we set? Let's get this going. You know, a lot of times we it's it's easy for us to underestimate the power of sight. The power of sight of what we see um, and this is so important second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 says we all with open face beholding as in a glass or a mirror the glory of God are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of god hi maureen so listen that means what you focus on ultimately becomes the reality of your life hmm. what you behold you become now second corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 paul says our light affliction is for a moment hi salamatu our light affliction is for a moment then verse 18, it's for a moment and it works for us. 
a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18, while we look, not at the things seen, for the thing, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Did you see that? It says, our light affliction. And if you want to understand what Paul was calling a light affliction, oh my goodness. He was talking about being shipwrecked. He was talking about being whipped. He was talking about being stoned. And he says that was light. Are you hearing me today? He says that was light. What made it light? How could he say that was light? He says, while we look. Now listen, you determine the power of every attack over your life you will determine how far the impact on of any circumstance you will determine it and how will you determine it by what you are beholding is somebody hearing me you will determine the power that affliction has over you by what you are beholding. If you are looking at the problem, the problem will win. Oh, did you hear what I said? If you are looking at the problem, the problem will win. If you are looking at the word of God and what God has done in your life in the past, the lion and the bear, you will win. Are you hearing me today? One of the key objectives of pressure, we all go through pressure, but one of the key objectives of pressure is to take your attention off the word. One of the key objectives of pressure is to take your attention off the word and focus on the problem. Are you hearing me? And once you do that, it will win. As long as Peter kept his attention on the word or on Jesus, guess what? He walked on water. The minute he looked, hi Hazel, the minute he looked at the problem, what was the problem? The water, the waves. Those waves were there before he stepped in off the boat. But as long as he looked at the word, the waves were powerless. As long as he looked at the waves, the waves were empowered. I hate to break the news to you that you empower problems to deal with you. You empower them. Are you hearing me? That's why when you hear some of the things that some of us have gone through, <laughs> you wonder why we are still standing. You wonder, Dr. Awori, I, I, I'm sure you are blessed by Dr. Awori's ministry and by Tom. You know, our objective is to just pump you with faith so that this year, you are, you, are, you, are, you are manifesting. Dr. Worry, he said, in the natural, and he looks at all the things that I've had to deal with. And nobody knew, and I was smiling and all that. He said, the heart attack should have happened in 2018 or 2019. <laughs> are you hearing me today? But I learned 
the waves can be there and they will not affect me. They are there, but I refuse to empower any problem to defeat me. Ah, it's not possible. It's not possible. I refuse. I see, don't customize your problem. Ah, nobody has had it as bad as this, so nobody... Uh, the problem you customize will stay. <laughs> it will stay. It has found a home. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me today? You know, breakthroughs don't happen until the word has been converted into an image. You see, the, the, the mind, and this is the key principle at work here, the human mind does not execute words. Listen carefully. The human mind executes images. So if I say a red BMW, you did not see letters, R-E-D-B-M-W. That's not what you saw. You saw an image. If I say a black Mercedes, you saw an image. You didn't see letters. All right? Now, that's very important because until the word you are seeing has been converted into an image, you won't be able to manifest it. But that's why you must be very careful what you see. You know, and you cannot be wiser than God. Romans chapter 4 verse 3. It says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham believed God. It was accounted to him for righteousness. My question is, at what point did Abraham believe God? What happened for him to believe God? You have to go back to Genesis chapter 12. When God made a promise to Abraham, God talked about his seed. God talked about, you know, he was going to become great. He said, I will bless you. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless those who bless you. He says, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, so God was promising him right there and then, you are going to have family. Are you hearing me? <laughs> so, ah, Abraham had that. Quickly, he got up. Verse 4, Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and the Lord went in his old. Yeah, at 75 years old. Now, let's look at this guy. Let's break it down. Let's break this down. You know, <laughs> this is the easy part. He did not have much going for him. You know, I mean, think of it. Let me break it down. This guy didn't have much going on for him right now. His dad had died in terror. There was no vision <laughs> that gave any hope beyond his immediate environment. So at the age of 75, ah, there's a new hope. He jumped at it quickly. That is the easy part. Anybody can jump on a bandwagon if you don't have anything going on for you right now. <laughs> Anybody. So Abraham jumped on it all. Is that when he believed God? Let's watch. Remember chapter 12, God had told him, you, I will bless your seed. Verse, chapter 15. Listen to chapter 15. This is Abraham, man of faith and power. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and exceeding great reward. Now listen. So God just came to greet him home. Say, dude, don't be afraid. I'm your guy. Quickly, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What's the ne next thing that came out of the mouth of Abraham? Verse 2. Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house 
Is this Eliezer of Damascus? Ah! He says, look, you have given me no offspring. No one born. He said, one born in my house. My servant is now going to inherit everything. In chapter 12, God had told him about Sido. So as he believed here, yeah. he hasn't believed though. Abraham. So don't knock yourself on the head if you're having problems. <laughs> Abraham. You know, when times we hear, we hear the story of Abraham, we think that, ah, God just spoke and he believed immediately. At the time he obeyed, there was nothing going on. <laughs> so it was easy to obey. <laughs> it was easy to obey. Daddy has died in terror. Ah, let's, let's move. If I, let's get rid of this memory. So when God has come, new hope. But here, he says, you've not given me anything. So what about the promise God made earlier on? Kowale, he didn't enter. He did not enter. <laughs> That's what happens to a lot of people. God is talking like this. God is shouting like this. It's not entering. <laughs> it's not entering. Eh? I want you to write, it will enter in Jesus' name. It will enter. It will enter my heart in Jesus' name. It will enter my heart, though. It will enter my heart. It will enter my heart in the name of Jesus. It will enter. And today I'm going to show you how it's going to enter. It will enter. So when God saw that, ah, this guy, this one has not entered. <laughs> when God saw it has not entered there, Ned, how are you? Eh? So when God saw, so God now said, up verse 4, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but one that comes from your body. So God, <laughs> God he reinforced it again. All right, so let's see, and this is important, even though he obeyed in chapter in, in chapter 12. Hello, Mary, you're very welcome. Uh, even though he obeyed in, in Genesis 12, he was driven by hope, which is good, you know, it's hope of a new life. But that's not enough to sustain God's will for your life. So even though God had told him about having children, he still went back to God with a complaint that have you, I don't have any child. <laughs> At this point, God now leads him to the greatest principle ever, which is the principle of sight, which is what we're talking about tonight. All right. Remember I said, there's nothing like blind faith. Faith always sees something. What, what it sees is where the problem lies for many. All right? And the purpose, like I said earlier, of trials and problems you have is to take your sight off the word of God. And it's very easy to do that. I know what I'm talking about. When you have been told you owe a quarter of a million uh, dollars in taxes, your property is being threatened, your name is being threatened, everything is being threatened. The easier thing to do is take your eyes off the world and look for your own alternative way to solve this problem. Is somebody hearing me? So how did God come to the rescue? <laughs> Genesis 15, Ooh, verse 5. Listen. Then he brought him outside. Who is bringing who? God brought Abraham outside and said, look now towards heaven. Count the stars if you are able to number them. He said, so shall your descendants be. Verse 6. When he had something to see. Verse 6. And he believed God. And accounted, he accounted it to him for righteousness. That is when Abraham believed God. He did not believe until he had something to see. So, after that, anytime the pressure is coming, you know, he didn't have a Bible. 
But what could he see? Anytime the pressure is coming, just walk out, look at the stars, and say, all right, the stars are there. That's the symbol of God's promise to me. Are you hearing me? He had something to see. God gave him a visual. So anytime his thoughts were going crazy, he could have something to look at. You know, there's a word used in the Bible. It's the word behold. It means to see, to look at. Look at deliberately. Look at intently. So listen. Oh, do you want to see a missing link to the Christianity of people today? Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. We all know it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature or new creation. Old things are passed away. It did not stop there. Behold, see, all things have become new. Before all things can become new in your life, you have to behold it. Woo, you have to behold it. Acheng, how are you? Welcome. Before all things can become new, you have to behold it. You have to see it. Where? In your imagination. We are victims of what we behold. Hello? We are victims of what we behold. <laughs> we've been caught in that oh if any man be in Christ a new creature uh, all things are past away behold things are come new uh, my friend if you don't behold it don't you know so many people who have been saved for many years and there's nothing new about their life <laughs> am I telling the truth here there's nothing new why it's not automatic. You have to behold it. We are victims of what we behold. We are to protect our mind. Hmm? Are you hearing me today? <laughs> if you don't think sight is important, let me show you something. Are you ready? If you don't think sight is important, do you realize that the entire pornography industry is built on sight? Do you realize that? It is a $97 billion industry globally. $97 billion. The United States accounts for $14 billion of that yearly. And it is an industry built on sight, on what you see. So if you ever thought sight was not important, think again. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1, it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go to war. I want you to notice that too. It is the time when kings go to war. David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. They destroyed uh, the children of Ammon and besieged Ramah. But David, who was the king, stayed in Jerusalem. And this is the time kings go to war. Verse 2. It came to pass in the evening. He arose from off his bed, walked on the roof of the king's house. From the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. The woman was very beautiful to look upon. <laughs> David goes, Mamma Mia, what we got here? And David sent and inquired after the woman and said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam? You know the rest of the story. David took her, slept with her, and she got pregnant. When you are in the wrong place, you will see the wrong thing. No. When you are in the wrong place, 
it was the time when kings go to war. He was at home. If he was where he's supposed to be, he no go see a moon. When you are in the wrong place, you will see what you are not supposed to see. When you are with the wrong company, you will see what you are not supposed to see. When you hang out with the wrong crowd, you will see what you are not supposed to see. That's why the Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence for it controls everything about you. There are some friends, if you hang out with them, even the conversation, and so you will see what you are not supposed to see. Are you hearing me? When you are led now, the converse, when you're led by the spirit, you will see things that will change your life and take you to the next level. When you are led, are you hearing me today? When you look at David and Bathsheba, do you know there was no mention of the devil in that whole thing? David was led by what he saw. By what he saw. Mm. so when you are in the wrong place you will see what you are not supposed to see and because you become what you see just being in the wrong place can shape your destiny are you hearing me today I've not been in Nigeria. I've left Nigeria for 30 years. 30 years this year. I left Nigeria in November 1994. And I, I don't really go to Nigeria. Um, last time I was there was, I think, 2017, my, when my dad died. No, 2018, Pastor Poju, my friend, was having a program. And... Uh, I had gone to speak there. So I've not been to Nigeria since then. And um, God leads you to be in the right place. Huh. A lot of people, it is the company they keep that will destroy them. Just by, you know, God orchestrating me to be in Nigeria, and I wasn't going to go to be in Nigeria over the last one week, God opened my eyes to see some things that have become life-altering for me. Life-altering. I will never forget a day we were on this platform and I was talking about how my son and I were in the passport office in Nigeria and there were a lot of people there. And uh, after a few minutes, Ola came to meet me. Ola told me, said, Dad, now I know you are called to Kenya. I said, why? He said, you've been, we've been, it's the first time I'm going to be with you in public. And in five minutes, nobody has come to say, oh, hello to you. Hello, Dr. Ali, I see you on television, or I've read your articles, or I have your books. So I laughed. I said, ah, I'm a nobody in this place. So hello, Jane. You're very, very welcome, woman of God. You know, I told my son, I said, I mean, I, I'm a nobody here. I said that on this platform. And my friend Jennifer wrote, not for long. Mm? Jennifer, you're a prophet. <laughs> because some things have been activated just by being in a place and seeing some things. Let's take it further. Are you ready today? <laughs> and I've talked about this before. What I'm about to show you now, but I'm going to take it to a whole new dimension. Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan. Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. Now listen, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. That's so important if you're underlining or marking just do that. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. Verse 13. 
The men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abraham after, you know, so Lot, listen, Lot was not in Sodom. He pitched his tent toward Sodom. Is somebody hearing me today? He was not in Sodom. I hear people say, oh, I was just looking. Ah. There's nothing like just looking. No. I hear people say, ah, it was just an innocent conversation. That was a... Hmm. All right. So, if you are not protective of what you look at, if you are not protective of what you are hearing, <laughs> if you are not protective, you are living a very risky life. Hmm. You will get into trouble. Anybody who is not protective of what they are looking at, of the company they are keeping, and uh, look, let me, before I even go far, Jeremiah 20. Stay in Genesis, but Jeremiah 20. There was a man called Pashur, the son of Emma, verse 1. I have read this so many times. Verse 1 who was also the chief governor in the house of the Lord, had that Jeremiah prophesied this thing. Now, what did Pashur do? Pashur is, a, is an officer of God, and he smites, he slaps Jeremiah. He slaps Jeremiah. <laughs> then Jeremiah begins to prophesy. All right? And said, prophesies all sorts of things about the land. Then he says, verse 6, And you, Pashur, and all that dwell in your house shall go into captivity. They did not commit a sin, no. They just dwelt in his house. You shall go into Babylon. There you shall die and be buried there. Listen, you and all your friends. Listen, oh, to whom you have prophesied lies. Oh. So the person that is prophesying the lie and the person that is listening, paying attention to the lie are equally guilty are you hearing me today equally guilty so lot is pitched his tent towards sodom looking at every day he wakes up like this he's looking at sodom he's hearing the music of sodom come are you hearing me today <laughs> He had a front row seat to see the Sodom life. Now look at Genesis 14. Don't forget, Lot is not in Sodom when we start off. Genesis 14, verse 1. It came to pass in the days of Amaphel, king of Shina, Ariel, king of Elasa, Ched, and all those kings. Verse 2. This made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and all those kings. Verse 3, they were all joined together in the Vale of Sidon, which is the Salt Sea. All right? Now look at verse 11. So there's this conspiracy, all these kings, a coalition come to attack. Now, verse 11, they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals. Listen, and went their way. Verse 12. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. The guy has moved from pitch his tent towards Sodom. He's now dwelling in Sodom. He's dwelling in Sodom. So he's no more facing Sodom. Now he's in. He started at something he was looking at. And over time, it became something he was in, something he was doing. Now, so what happens? Verse 13. There came one that escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre. All right? Verse 14. 
when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, both in his own house, 318, and pursued them to Dan. All right? Now, so they go out in their military strategy, verse 16. He brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. So Abraham, <laughs> let, let, me re, let me rephrase this. So we start off with Lot, not in Sodom, facing Sodom. Then Lot ends up in Sodom. Then he's captured. Because he's where he's not supposed to be, so he's captured. Then Abraham goes and rescues him. So now Lot is back, or supposed to be back with Abraham. You see? Verse nine, chapter 19. Chapter 19. <laughs> Verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat at the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. He bowed himself with his face to the ground. He said, now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house. The brother, listen, he's back in Sodom. He's back there because his whole mindset had now been corrupted been, with the mentality of Sodom. Now listen, <laughs> not only is he back, he has a house there, he's begging the people to come back to his house, not only does he have a house there, what does Proverbs 31, 23 say? The fact of the husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders. So Lot is at the gates. Lot has become an elder of Sodom. Hey! <laughs> is somebody here with me tonight? I think I'm the only one here. Lot has become an elder. He's one of the leaders, the elders of Sodom. It started, I'm only looking. Hey, I'm only looking. That's where it started. Eh? Now look at verse 5. Verse 4, you see that it becomes terrible. Before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, and all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said, Where are the men which came to see you this night? Bring them out so we may know them. Can you hear this? Yeah, bring those guys out. Let's sleep with them. Men. That's where the word Sodomy came from. Homosexuality. And verse 6. Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. I want you to see the depravity of Lot's mind. He said, do not do so wickedly. Listen, behold, I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out to you. Do to them as is good in your eyes. Only to these men do nothing. <laughs> Are you seeing? Lot is completely consumed. He's now thinking like the people of Sodom. Who are you hanging around with? You will think like them. Hang around kings. You will think like kings. Hang around slaves. You will think like slaves. Hang around winners, you will think like a winner. Hang around losers, you will think like losers. Are you hearing me today? 
He's offering his daughters. Wow. <laughs> this, I hope you are seeing the gravity of what you see, who you hang out with, who you give airtime to. Some people look at some of us and sometimes think we are arrogant. Uh, we are, you know, let me tell you what it is. We are very conscious of the fact that we have to be selective in our association. We are very conscious of the fact that evil communications corrupt good manners. We are very conscious of the fact that if we are in the midst of lies, the person speaking and the person listening are in the same WhatsApp group. Are you hearing me today? So that's why we are very selective. He says, bless someone. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Ah! Are you hearing me today? <laughs> no stand in the path of sinners. No sit in the seat of the scornful. Can you see the progression? Number one, he starts walking. Then he stands. And then he sits. He sits. Are you hearing me today? And this is what happened to Lot. This is what happened to Lot. So the angels go and say, you know, we're going to destroy this place. And the, the, the men are pressing against, you know, so the, 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 the angelic beings pull Lot inside to the house and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door with blindness, both small and great. That's verse 11. Now, why was God interested in Lot in the first place? We're going to see that very soon. Verse 12. The men said unto Lot, they are the angelic beings, do you have any here besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatever you have in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. The Lord has sent us to destroy it. Verse 14, Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, <laughs> which had married his daughters, and said, Get up out of this place, for the Lord will destroy. Mm. <laughs> Tim, that's a very good point. That uh, Lot's daughters were married to men of Sodom. So there's no way they could have been virgins, like Lot was saying. You know? He seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. The sons-in-laws were so deep in Sodomic life, they've been given over to their debased mind. You know what? And they said they're not going. Even though rescue had come, they couldn't see it. They did not know they needed help. They are blinded to their help. Verse 15. When morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters, which are here, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. While he lingered, Lot didn't want to leave. He did not want to leave. He lingered. The men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and his two daughters, 
the Lord being merciful unto him, they brought him forth and sent him outside the city. So Lord's daughters had to leave those guys at this point. And you know what? Let me tell you something. God is merciful. God is gracious. We're going to see later on they were very fertile, yet they did not bear children. God in his mercy shut their womb so they will not bear the seed of the low life, of the Sodomic life. Sometimes when certain things are closed, and you're doing all that you need to do, God is protecting you from something. Uh, sometimes when things are not happening like you want them to, after you've done all to stand, just relax. Let the wind of the Spirit direct your sails. God may be preventing you from being entrenched in the low life. Adam and Eve were driven out of the Garden of Eden, out of God's love, so they would not eat the tree of life and then live in perpetuity in a fallen state. Anyway, let's go back to Lot. So, uh, verse, where were we? Verse 17. It came to pass, when they had brought them up, out, he said, escape for your life. Now listen to the instruction. Don't look behind. How did they get into problems in the first place? By looking. So they are told, don't look behind. And told them to go. Escape into the mountains, lest you be consumed. Verse 18, Lord said, oh, not so, my Lord. Behold now, thy servant has found grace in your sight. You have magnified thy mercy, which you have showed me in saving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me. What evil? was what evil was more than the evil you are in in Sodom. Behold, this city is near to flee unto. It's a little one. Let me escape there. Is it not a little one? Verse 21, he said, See, I've accepted thee concerning this, and also I will not overthrow this city. So he was in one of the outskirts, all right? He says, Haste thee, verse 22, escape there. I cannot do anything till you come there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zohar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. He overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground. Verse 26. But his wife looked back. And she became a pillar of salt. What was the significance of looking back? Looking was what got them into trouble. What you behold, you become. Now, what is the significance of salt? Salt is worthless on its own. That's why nobody is going to invite you for a meal of boiled salt or roasted salt. Salt is... So when God says, you are the salt of the earth... The beauty of salt comes when it is added to something as flavor, but on its own, it's useless. All right? Now, Sodom was a worthless place, and she beheld a worthless space and became worthless. Why? Because she was looking. Lot ended up as a, an elder because he was looking. Hebrews 11, 15 says, verse 16 says, um, verse 15, that 15, if they were mindful of where they came out, they would have had opportunity to return. All right? And that's exactly what happened to her. Now, you would think this story has ended. But it gets from bad to worse. So, in the next few minutes, let me just give you the worst and then we'll wrap it up. All right, Genesis 19, verse 27. <laughs> Abraham got up in the morning to see the place where he stood before the Lord, and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of the plain, and beheld, and lo, the smoke of that country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the city. So God was doing everything for Lot because of Abraham, all right? 
and this is important, whatever life you choose, whether you choose the high life, like Abraham, or you choose the low life, it will have an impact on your family. It will have an impact on all those around you. Many years ago, when I got introduced to the word of faith, I chose the lifestyle I was going to live. And it has affected my children. It affected where they went to school. It affected everything about their lives. All right? So you have a choice to make today. Now, let's wrap this up. Verse 30. Genesis 19, verse 30. And Lot went up out of Zoah and dwelt in the mountain, and his two daughters with him. He feared to dwell in Zoah, and he dwelt in a cave, and his two daughters. Now listen. The firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old. There is not a man in the earth to come into us after the manner of all the earth. Was that true? That was a lie. It's not as if they, they were starting the earth again, like they were Noah or Adam and Eve. We said, there is not a man. Let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve the seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night. The firstborn went in, lay with her father. He perceived not when she lay down, and she arose, not when she arose. Following day, the firstborn said to the younger, I did it yesterday. Let's make him drink wine again tonight. You go and lie with him that we may preserve the seed of our father. And they made their father drink wine that night, that night also. The younger arose and lay with him and he perceived not when she lay down or when she arose. Though, thus, verse 36, was the both were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. Fatal children, fatal father. And the firstborn bear his son, called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites until this day. The younger, she bear a son and called his name Benami. The same is the father of the Ammonites, uh, the children of Ammon until this day. So Lot becomes the father of Moabites and Ammonites. Nobody gave Israel as much trouble like those two. You remember 2 Chronicles 20, when Joshua had to praise God and all that. He says, the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, those were the people that gave Israel the greatest problems the greatest enemies and hindrance to God's people. Let me tell you, the seeds of your low life choices will always fight your high life aspirations. The seeds of your low life choices will always fight your high life aspirations. If you don't protect your mind, you will not be the only victim. It can transcend generations. Are you hearing me today? So if there is one thing you got to do today is you've got to take charge of what you hear, what you see, take charge. The only weapon the devil can use against you is the one you open up to, what you see, what you hear. Is somebody hearing me today? That's the only weapon. Take charge. Take charge. Are you hearing me today? Take charge. Lot started by looking. And it messed up his lineage. Just by looking. His wife looked that was the end his children raised in the in the environment of Sodom had their thinking messed up they were they were proper 
I mean, by the time your dad is an elder of Sodom, you are the Sodom royalty. That's who they were. So take charge. When God says, protect your mind, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. It's for your good. God has nothing to gain. It's for your good. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today? <laughs> Protect yourself. What you see will shape who you become. I'm going to continue from this on, on, on Sunday. What you see will shape who you become. And there's a mystery I'm going to unravel on Sunday. Thank you, Nedi. You know the mystery I'm going to unravel on Sunday? And I want you to be thinking about this between now and Sunday. If what you see shapes who you become, how come how come the bank teller that sees and handles millions of money every day does not become a millionaire? How come the maid in a millionaire's home does not become a millionaire? Yet, that maid can see wealth everywhere. So if what you see shapes who you become, how do we explain those scenarios to be continued on Sunday? Did you get it today? Hallelujah. And this is, you know, this is one of those messages. It is not praying that, oh God, Help me to see that. No, 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 no. You are the one that with your eyes, you will decide. <laughs> you will decide. I'm not going to use this, my eye, to see the wrong thing. Let me share something with you before I close. My mom, my late mom, she used to like horror movies and crime movies. When I say crime movie, you know, uh, she was a fan of there was this novels those days, uh, Agatha Christie. Hmm? Now, let me tell you. So, my mom was that person, if you're in the house, and there is a small sound outside. You know, this computer would... Yes, murder mystery. And will connect dots that are not there. <laughs> Why? That's what she's been seeing. I had to stop watching hospital things because when you watch, and let me tell you, I'm not telling you do this, don't do this. I'm telling you about what I did. Watch all those, a lot of those hospital things any small symptom on your body, you have already done self-diagnosis. If I when my mom was, before my mom died, I had to tell my dad, I said, dad, you are looking at mom as a medical doctor, not as a believer. Because he's a doctor. So he knows two plus two equals four. That's why, you know, doctors like doctor are worried. We need more of them. We need more of them. Busala, my sister. How are you? <laughs> are you hearing me? But because doctor, he doesn't say two plus two equals four. You know. I said we need to look at it like a believer. So be careful what you are seeing. Be careful what you expose yourself to. Because what you expose yourself to can affect generations. Okay? 
Sawa. I've said what he said. I should tell you. The rest is in your hand, though. Are you hearing me? I've done my job tonight. The rest is in your hands. And that is make a decision today. I will not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. <laughs> I'm not going to expose myself to the wrong influences. If it's not the word, I'm going to protect myself from it. I'm not going to get involved with people complaining about the nation. No. I'm not going to get involved in people speaking down at authority. No. I'm not going to get involved in all those things. No. I'm keeping my heart. I'm not going to get involved that, oh, things are so bad. I'm not going to get involved with that. He says, when they say there is a casting down, you will say there is a lifting up. I'm not going to get involved in that. I'm not going to get involved in, oh, well, we're just, it's just gist, it's just talking. I'm not going to get involved in that. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to get involved in all that. I'm going to preserve and protect myself. So that when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard. All right? I keep referring. If my, I had allowed a lot of fear stuff, a lot of hospital stuff and all that to come into me and the heart attack happened, you know what would have happened? All those memories will come back and the conclusion will be made when you have the, my friend Julius Kipnati told me, he said, you know, he said, this thing, you should not last more than three minutes. <laughs> you should not last more than three minutes. If I've been getting all that information, and you need to be careful, let me save my parting shot. It is, you know how Jesus would say, it is easier for, a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Let me give you my own eye of a needle speech. It is more difficult for a naturally intelligent person to embrace faith than a person who is not as naturally intelligent. You know why? Because the naturally intelligent person has thought of 25,000 ways. Eh? You run ahead of God. Meanwhile, when you know that if God doesn't help me, I'm finished. That is where I am. If God doesn't help me, I'm finished. So I just wait. Je, je. What is he saying? No. Are you hearing me today? What is he saying? So I beg you, make a decision today. You'll be amazed at how your faith life will take a new trajectory. God bless you. Keep giving. That's very important. Never slow down on your giving. Never slow down on your giving. Keep giving. Keep speaking. The giving details on the screen. Keep speaking. Keep praising. And you know what? You keep winning. We love you. And we'll see you on Sunday. Today is Thursday, right? So we'll see you on Sunday. Pastor Taiwo says hello. Bye.